Okay, track one on escapades, antecedent. Antecedent. I remember Matt bringing that one to the table. And it was a very fun one to write and record. Good. That was probably the first song we officially were like, this song's gonna be in the album. Hard. A lot of like, reprises in that song, I guess. Like, we would like, take the chorus and do it again, but like, change the structure. Some ghost notes. Not very many. Kind of set up the rest of the collaborative efforts that we had, in terms of how much we wanted to break someone apart once someone brought it to the table. Two. Wax and Wayne. That was the first song I personally was putting together for the album. Many ghost notes. Definitely uh, something we've never really explored before is using a lot of slap technique throughout the song. Yeah, there's a lot of thumping on there. I think it started out with that intro reverse swelling that's in there. Good song. But um, to get the rest of the song I had to add and cut and add and cut lots of different riffs and sections till I thought it made sense to me. Um, combined with harmonics and, and finger techniques to make just a, or an interesting piece. And yeah, I presented to the boys after that and they put their touches on it and uh, it's song on Ding Wong. Um, Labyrinth? Uh, the Labyrinth Chronicles. The idea for that originally started from a video we did about four years ago. Yeah, Matt came up with that little intro clown vibe like a few years ago. Quick kicks. Um, and then we reworked it towards a, a song that was album worthy. That's really it. <laughs> Track 4, Scurry Funge. That's a very tough song to play. This song started out as a little riff that I put together right when we got back from Europe, I think. Blast Beats. Six or seven months later, I gave it to Matt. Like, just didn't know what would go afterwards. And he just put the rest of the song together from that. And I was like, yeah, sick. Then it really just became the hardest song in the album. Triplets. Or a tough, like going from slap to the, I guess you call it shred. Like finger twisting kind of stuff. Double bass. Featuring the double bass solo as well, which is a nice touch. And like, I guess like a logical step for our band being, being bass players. The track five, Merlin's Ear. Um, featuring a lot of the slap techniques and... Very big. Thumping and all that kind of, kind of jazz. Every song that I worked on this album kind of took me like two weeks to be like, yes, yeah, I'm happy with the structure. Very, very fun one to record, and I saw a very, very long song. Matt putting everything at the end. The song's all on Dingwall. Um, EDM. Six, Matai. Starts out with this big pad like kind of thing that we put together. I think we put it together like three or four times. And the two were like, yeah, cool, that's the vibe. Stupidly metal. Like, I'd say it's just probably our most metal song. Metal. Metallica-esque riffs going on that's very hard to play. Yeah, so hard to play. 16th notes. Probably the most I can say about that. It's just lots of quick finger stuff. Kicks. It takes you on a journey that you don't really expect when you start listening to the song, which is quite cool. Close hi-hat, but double kick. How's that possible? You gotta find out. Fountainhead's probably one of the more interesting stories for the, for the record I, I wrote that with. We made a mine Max Ross Glide about six, seven years ago and just took it and reworked it for this band. Took it somewhere I was very happy with, featuring a lot of like melodies as well as slap, featuring the Warwick bass as well. Nice slap touch to the sound of the song. Shields next. Track eight, Dwam. Um, I kind of took for myself from like eight years ago or something. I, I wrote it when I first got Pro Tools and I was just demoing all this ambient stuff. And I'm um, kind of, I guess, like an escapade, a very calm escapade. And it really brings me back to when I wrote it, um, which was a very simple time. So it was kind of like, it just, it's like my core foundation of like uh, what I like about melodies or whatever, which is what I still like about it today. So. Yeah, I rejigged that for the band, just restructuring it to a way that makes sense. Okay, track 9, Nay Plus Ultra. I think that was the last song I kind of put together for the album. Features kind of both me and Toby's strengths in different ways, writing-wise. Again, another two-week song to kind of forget until I was happy to present it to the guys. So I'm very, very proud of how that song turned out, because um, I guess it kind of infuses all our uh, different interpretations of how we write and just music in general, and how it just like, puts it into a song. It was so collaborative. Collaborative effort. It kind of hit that point of where I thought our music could go from in the previous releases. It kind of just like, that's just so us and that's just so where I wanted our music to be. We haven't really had a song that collaborative ever before, so yeah, it's a very, very nice song. And I feel like that'll translate when you listen to it as well.
So the interlude in the album Escapades. Track 10 Escapades is an interlude with a, I guess, a, I guess, I guess Easter eggs of the album. Like it's just various riffs of the whole album kind of like merged into this kind of, this creepy kind of sounding interlude. It kind of takes you on a walk through this carnival-esque soundscape. Very fitting towards the, the name of the album and which is also the song name. Track 11, Posterity, the final track in the album. Very quick. I would say a heavier song on the record. Very heavy, very quick kicks. Shares various riffs with track one, Antecedent. Reprises a lot of riffs and themes. I guess like fitting to the song name, it's almost named oppositely to Antecedent. Makes this, the album into like a sandwich with those two songs. Um, and it also shares shares some riffs with, with Antecedent as well. Like taking the album back to kind of the start, but also kind of adding additional things to make those riffs sound different as well. A lot of piano. And yeah, the last musical element of the album is also the very first musical element of the album with that melodic piano ending where the bass is started, which is a nice little bookend. Finn, end album.